hello everybody and uh, thanks a million Anya and yeah the face of the department here so <laughs> uh, hello everybody and and just to say from the outset as a person from Longford my standard of English may not be up to the quality of, of my <laughs> of of, uh, of Michael's but <laughs> that's a, that's an Irish joke anyway uh, so look at I, I I'm actually delighted to be here today to be able to to to, to talk to you um uh, not in huge detail but 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 really just to give you an outline of 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 the department's thinking in terms of, of the summer program, um, a, a little bit about where it's come from over the years, I suppose the huge kind of rapid change it's undergone over the last couple of years and, and kind of the issues that that's surfaced as a result and you know where we want to go I think in, in the very near future, in other words for next year and, and further beyond. And, and listening to people like Michael and, and, and Teresa t talking about their experience and, and what they do in, 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 in their country uh, I, I think has been really beneficial to us and it's the kind of thing that we need to, to listen to as we go forward. So what I'm going to be talking about a little bit is, first of all, the background, where we've come from, um, and then I'll move on and talk a, a little bit about about what, what has happened over the last few years uh, more specifically. We'll talk a little bit about the issues that, have, that, that, you know, that I think everybody here will be familiar with and and more importantly we'll talk about the review that we're undertaking at the moment uh and 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 how we want to want you to have your say in 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 how we develop this policy going forward it's really important to us so first of all um as you can see july provision as it was called i say it's in place since 93 i think there was i think there was a, a court ruling or, or certainly a, a, a um a recommendation by i think it was a justice o'hanlon actually as it happens but but but, but but I think the first July provision in the summer actually happened in 1997, and and that was for people with severe and profound uh, general learning difficulties. And then I think I think actually in 2001, then children with autism then became part of the program, and it, and it more or less stayed that way um, for for the next 18, 19 years. Uh, I just making the point, I suppose, that the number of special schools in classes running the program, which, which is how it originated, and that's what July provision was. When I, when I was looking through, through, through the figures, I, I saw that it actually, it had been declining since 2011. I think in 2011, there was 54 schools running a program, which, which, which is still less than half of, 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 sorry, special schools, I should say. And, and you know, that's still less than, less than half of the schools that were, were there at the time. Uh, I think in 2019 then, there was 34 special schools running the program, which is, you know, which is, which, which is an incredibly low take up. It's gone up a little bit since that, but I, you know, we've reached a bit of a plateau and it's something that we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, so I, I'm gonna spend a, f a few slides just talking about, I suppose, the evolution of, of, the, of the summer program as we now call it, and why it's not called July provision anymore also. Um, at the start, it was only available to special schools and pupils in special classes in primary schools and in deaf schools, uh, and it was limited to children with either an autism diagnosis or children who had a severe and profound general learning disability. There was about 15,500 children eligible across the country. Um, and then we also had literacy and numeracy camps as well in, in deaf schools. So in 2020, uh, and, and, and this would have been decided before COVID hit us, there was expanded eligibility criteria, and I'm not listing all the 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 expansion of that eligibility because to be honest with you you know it was it was it was it was just it was listing out a range of, of particular disabilities that 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 could be admitted and and you know it i you know it, it didn't go far enough in terms of in inclusivity is in, in, in my opinion uh, and we had we also introduced a, an inclusion program in post primary only and it was our first use of that language using using the word inclusion uh, which i think is really important that brought the eligibility up to around 24000 um, in in 2021, uh, and 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 this is this is where I suppose there was significant change. I, I I think it's fair to say, and and I know it's sometimes it's difficult to try and think back uh, through the different periods of COVID, and and you know some things are are, are no doubt um, ingrained on your minds, but but I think the start of 2021 was particularly difficult for 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 parents and children in terms of the impact of COVID and what it was doing, more school closures. Um, um, a, a really a really a really tough time that that i mean had to lead to some serious thinking um across government and and, and certainly in the department uh, i'm sure some of you would have availed of, of of a thing called a supplementary program which i, I think ran around easter um and i think about fourteen thousand children 
availed of that. And I, I think I think it probably it probably became apparent that actually, you know, there are more children. You know, we 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 had a very defined list of children who were eligible to to something like this scheme, and and I think it probably taught us that actually we, you know, there are so many more children that 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 need the extra the extra education and the extra the 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 extra support that that was required. Both both people with complex needs and people from particular backgrounds, and and a lot of that surfaced through COVID in terms of experience with working with 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 you know with families where where the, where there was difficulties in terms of what could be provided in the in the in the home, and to be able to provide that supplementary program was really important for a lot of people. I think I think in twenty twenty one was probably the first time when we we changed the name. So we we always talk about July provision, and if, even within the department people still call it July provision, no, ma no, no matter how, how often I, I I try to correct them, but we, we call it the summer programme. Um, and for the first time, all schools were given the opportunity to run a school-based programme, and that included a new inclusion programme in primary. So we, we, had, we, had, we had six different kind of, and we still do, I suppose, at the, at the moment, or certainly up to 2022, we had six different um, types of programmes. We'd run special schools, we had special classes, we had uh, literacy and numeracy camps. We had uh, we had inclusion program in primary, inclusion pro program in post pr primary, and a, and a desk program. So 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 a wide variety of 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 uh, provision. Um, but I I I think you know it it came at a rapid pace as a result of COVID, and we we had to respond to what we needed very very quickly. Um, and things evolved in different in different kind of silos at the time. So so that was something we needed to look at. In terms of eligibility, then, and and I, I, I you know, and I think this is really important, and it's important going forward. It's about moving away from the diagnosis and the labelling, and you know, the list of disabilities and 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 diagnosis that people have, bec because no, no matter how how well you try and do that, it you know, it's it it's never going to be sufficient. And looking at the continuum of support model, you know, based on need. So what, what, what do you need? What's the most complex needs the children have? What, what are the priority areas that we need to look at? So we, we estimated that follow, follow, following these changes, there's about 80,000 children eligible. Uh, and, and look, that's very much a guesstimate because, because, as you know, we don't have exact numbers of children with particular disabilities or, 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 or cohorts of needs in the, in the, in the country, but we can, you know, we, we know how many children are in special schools and special classes and, and, uh, and, 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 and some other statistics like that. So then for the 2022 program, and, and we can see, the, you know, this has really happened over the last two years. Um, it was important we had to listen to feedback from stakeholders. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I think we've li we listened to a lot of stakeholders, but we, we didn't listen to all of them, I don't think. Uh, we had to get a certain amount done in a certain amount of time, and what we what we did put in place was flexibility and timing. So what does that mean? It it means actually schools didn't have to run it in July. I think I think I think, you know, from a historical perspective, what what schools tended to do was primary at primary level, they were, you know, they did school up to the end of June, and they went straight into July provision for up to four weeks, two, three, four weeks, wh wh whatever it was. And then they were finished for the summer, and I think that that was kind of the, the, the historical position. Actually, what we said to schools is you can now you can run it at whatever stage suits you during the summer. And, and actually, I think our inspectors were recommending to schools um, that actually August might be a better time to run a summer program, whether 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 it's sufficient or not, I don't know. But but because it might be better in terms of a lead in to to, to, to going back to school in September and, and supporting that kind of transition arrangement, whether you were starting school or moving school or moving up in school. Um, we did give additional time and payments for, 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 for the organisation of the summer programme, and it's something we'll come back to a little bit later. Uh, you know, that worked well in a lot of cases, but then may maybe not all. The widening of the workforce, which is, you know, something that Michael has, has spoken at length about in terms of problems they faced in Malta, I think, I mean, we're all very familiar um, with, with the difficulty that schools have told us in, in, in terms of attracting, you know, getting their own staff to, to run the program. Um, and initially, it used to be just teachers and a small circumstance SNAs. Um, we now allow teachers and SNAs 
in, in, in all school programs but for the for the last year um schools were entitled to go beyond beyond just their, their teachers and SNAs and they could bring in people from other 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 areas of 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 work and study for instance we 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 uh, widened the number of uh, student teachers who could take part in the scheme um pe people from the early childcare sector uh, students uh could also take part and that there is a couple of there's a couple of uh, examples where, where that actually worked really really well in a couple of special schools so so that I, again that's something I'll come to I'll come to a bit a bit later on we reduced the admin burden for schools plus we increased the capitation so so in terms of the, the form filling and the systems and everything else that we used we made some improvements to them to make it a little bit easier um, we gave more money to schools more importantly um, a new system for quicker payments to staff again we worked with our payroll system and our IT systems to, to just try and make it that little bit easier for for uh, for schools to to input the, the the information that was needed for the for the payroll system in the department to pay the staff quicker and, and again that's something that's that's worked really well this year. Uh, ad additional grant funding for special schools. I, I I'll actually I'll come back to that a little bit later again because it, it coincides with something we were trying to do um, to support a kind of more more holistic approach from from a therapeutic nursing etc position to to get that in place but but i think the late announcement last year probably meant that, that didn't uh, that didn't translate into something that that, that 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 was as widely used as it could be and just ukrainian participation i, ju I just mentioned that as an example of where we're, we're actually what we had put in place in terms of making this more inclusive meant that when there was a large number of Ukrainians came to this country last April, May, um, we, we, we were able, within our existing programme, or inclusion model, to bring them into the, into the programmes. Um, it, it was always open, and we were careful about the way we worded this bec because it, the, the programme, the inclusion programme, was open to all those who came from a mi migrant background, including those from Ukraine. So it wasn't, it wasn't solely just for Ukrainians. I suppose Ukrainians, we, we did have to, for, for central government, we did have to count the numbers, etc., and, uh, um, <coughs> and feed it back to government, but, but, but it is wider than just that. So ju just at a glance, uh, I suppose, looking at the number of, of, of participating learners and schools and summer programmes from 2019 up to 2022, and you can see there a huge increase. Uh, We've gone from about 13,000, I think, in, in 2019, up to what we think would be about 45,000 in 2022. But as we know, and it, it's not a numbers game necessarily. It's about it's about the quality. It's about it's about prioritisation. About it's about getting 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 support for those who need it most. So that that's something that we're very conscious of. I still think it's it's great that we're able to support this number of children. And again, the number of schools, as you can see, I think it was I think it was 377 in 2019. Or, or a bit less than that, actually. I think it was it was around 300, uh, and that, and that's gone up to o over a thousand schools. Now we have 4,000 schools in the country. Not every school necessarily needs to run a summer program, but but certainly there's more that can do more. So I th I think it's just in terms of what the aims of the program currently are, and it's something you can reflect on in terms of whether this this still is something. Uh, if we need to add to this, if if it's still what the f what the focus should be, but I don't think it's a million miles away from what 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 Michael talked about in Malta earlier. It's it's in terms of maintaining their connection with education, building confidence, increasing motivation, promote well-being, and for those who are key transition sa stages, helping to ensure the continued education journey in September. So so there's no there's no mention in that of grades or or curriculum or or particular levels of educational attainment because i don't i, I don't i don't think that's that's the most important thing of, uh, about what we're doing here and the other the other end that we have is 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 in terms of inclusion it's the way forward but as i said it's not at the expense of any one cohort of student so so that's something that's at the forefront of our mind as we plan ahead into into the future um we still have to prioritise and we still have to look at those children with, with the most complex needs, those who need it the most in, in terms of delivering the service, but, but it has to be available for as many, as many that need it as possible. And for us, at least anyway, the school-based programme will always be the priority. And, and, and you know, 
our, uh, our Minister, uh, Minister Madigan, was in, in the Shannon earlier in the week talking a little bit about the summer programme making statements and, and I think she said that when she was asked what her targets were and her targets were not numbers necessarily, it, it, was, it, was, it, it, was simply, it was simply about having a school-based programme available for, for those children that need it and, and, and that, that is at, at, at the centre of what we're trying to do. So what we're doing currently is we're reviewing the programme and I think the Minister made that announcement early in the week but we've, you know, in truth we've been doing this for the last, the last number of months um, and I suppose the first thing to look at is what, what, are, what are the issues that have, 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 have come about and none of these will be, uh, none of these will be new to anybody here who, who's, who's dealt with the summer programme I think at the, or the July provision previously. One of the big problems was a late announcement in order to secure the funding that we needed to make the programme as inclusive as possible for the last two years. I don't think we announced it till May uh, for, for a programme that's starting, you know, theoretically on the 1st of July or even earlier. That left schools with, you know, very little time to organise. People, people, people had holidays booked, etc., etc. Um, the planning, the training, if you want to bring in staff who, who, aren't, who aren't familiar maybe with the children or, you know, created severe difficulties and that, 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 that was a big problem. Payment for staff, payment of staff, I suppose payment to staff maybe uh, was delayed. Um, it, 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 had, it had been in line a little bit, but I think, I think if you saw, when you saw the increase in the numbers of, of participants and, and therefore the number of, 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 of teachers that were taking part in SNAs, et cetera, it caught our system by surprise probably a little bit, but, but obviously COVID and, and working arrangements, et cetera, made it more difficult. So there was, there was problems paying staff. And obviously, if, if staff aren't paid in a, in a timely manner, that's, that's hardly an incentive to, uh, to, to do the programme again. I, I, I think that's something we've, as I said earlier, you know, this, this year, all, all staff who were involved in the school-based programme have be, were paid, uh, you know, almost immediately. And, and staff involved in the home-based programme, I think they'll all have been paid. Any that are completed, at least any, will, be, will have been paid by, by next week, which, which is a huge improvement on previous and... and is uh, is 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 you know testament to the staff that are working on it, but also you know a lot of work had to go into making the systems fit for purpose so that that could happen. Uh, burnout is is something that has 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 been said to us. Uh, you know the difficulties working uh, working in, in in intensive intensive situations, but uh, but also COVID has been a big problem for for teaching staff that we're we're this is what we're this is what we're told in terms of why why maybe some schools didn't run a, run a program. Over reliance on principal, uh, at least that's the, what the principals have, have said anyway, uh, and and I think I think it I think it's 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 probably fair in terms of the way that our school system works in this country, in that the the, the principal is expected to do so much in a, in a school, particularly primary schools and special schools, and it's and, and that's something we very much have to have to take to heart in terms of supporting them. Um, Low take up in special schools, I, I've mentioned already, but, but I think it's important to, to just reflect on it again. Uh, the, again, the minister, when she was speaking in the Shannon, said that would be a big priority for her. Uh, while we want to improve the summer programme across the board for every, every, everyone taking part, I think, I think that will be a, a real focus for us over the, over the next couple of months. And it has been, I should say, already, but, but, but in, ter in terms of getting out and, and uh, Michael talked about talking to every single centre, etc., we'll be we'll be talking to every, there's 128 special schools and we'll, we'll be talking to them all, um, either ourselves, to education centres, inspectors, etc. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of dialogue has started and there's a lot continuing over the next couple of months on that. And then the last, I have a question mark on the last one and we, we, we'll touch on it when, it when we're talking about the questions about the overlines on the home-based programme. It's probably, it's probably stri strictly speaking, I, I think one, one, as we, brainstorm these things and talk about them a little bit as to, as to how we approach them. I mean, we probably shouldn't even call it a home-based programme at this stage uh, for, for what it is. And, and, and again, until, until like, if, if we don't get this right, the, the school-based programme won't fall into place either. So, so, so some, of the, some of the teams around what maybe you might be talking about this afternoon will, will probably look at this a little bit. So, so again, what do we want to achieve for next year? Um, we want to build on the progress to date. I think we have made a lot of progress over the last couple of years. I, you know, I, I, I appreciate there are still issues and there are still things we have to, we have, we have to do better, but, but I think we have made a lot of progress, especially in terms of in inclusivity. Uh, an emphasis on supporting those children with the most complex needs in a school-based setting. So that's, that's kind of summarising what was said. 
but 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 that's what that that really is our emphasis um and and and, and looking at what we need to do to do to, to to achieve that and you can see fully supporting schools to remove any barriers so organization making sure there's workforce avail availability administration resources for schools and training which is a really important part of it and and that has to be something that's built into any approach to organizing the program leading up to the summer so as part of the review who are, who are we engaging with so we we, we have ad advocacy groups there and we have a, a consultative forum uh, there's a couple of members here all, uh, today uh, and we we've had fairly intensive engagements i, I think um I, I i didn't write write the words breathing down our necks like 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 michael did but again it's 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 fairly accurate but again the same as you say it's it's entirely justified and and and, and we're quite happy for that to continue schools and school management um you know it's, it strikes me in terms of the, the maltese model which you know i haven't commented on but 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 we, we've spoken uh, to, to to their colleagues and and there are definitely learnings for us to take from it so I know you're going to be looking at that again in the afternoon. We, we've already reflected on some of those and, and it'd be really interesting to see if you're taking similar towers in, t in, in terms of how maybe we can take some of the learnings. I don't, I don't think we can use everything, but we can certainly take a lot. Um, as you know, the structure, I think, I think it's fair to say in, in Malta, you, the state own all, all the schools all the, and all the resource centres, um, or, or most of them at least anyway. In this country, obviously, uh, patronage and ownership of schools is quite a, a complex situation so there's a lot of stakeholders involved when it comes to talking to to the school management and schools etc but, it, but it's an important part of, of what we have to do um, because because we want we want a school to be available we want so we want we want that environment to be available to children during the summer months we have to talk to the teachers obviously and, and see what their what their needs are one, one of the things Mike talked about remuneration we obviously you know Parents do get paid, or, or teachers and SNAs do get paid additionally during the summer. We we will look and do whatever we can in terms of that. Without, you know, we, we have, a dif have difficulty in terms of impinging on the wider kind of paying conditions are, uh, discussions that are going on more more generally for 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 educational staff. But but it's something that we will use our imagination if we have to to get around. Um, the inspectorate, really important part of of ensuring that summer program works effectively. Uh, I you know I. I the, the inspectors have been visiting a lot of schools during 2022. They're engaging with parents and 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 uh, and children and 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 talking about what worked well and what didn't work well and, and how we can improve because the content is, is is you know once we can get a school to run a program, the content is is obviously hugely important and 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 how 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 it's how it's something that can really develop the, the children that are taking part. I mean the inspectors. I've I've seen a couple of videos from schools where it's been run. And you know they really, they really, uh, they, they give they give the encouragement. To, I, you know, I have a lot of staff who who work on processing claims, and it's quite, you know, it's quite labour intensive and a lot of overtime involved. But when they see videos like that, it really gives them encouragement in terms of knowing what they do. It makes a huge difference, and and the inspector has, has described it as as life changing for a lot of children. Uh, and if something is life changing for a lot of children, then we have to we ha we, we we have to make sure that all those children that, that need it to be life-changing for them can get access to it. Other departments and agencies, and this is a really important part of what we're trying to do in terms of coordinated response. Um, obviously the NCSE, is, John is here, and we, we talked to, to the Department of Further and Higher Education, um, the Teaching Council, and, and, and uh, uh, the HSE. In terms of having that kind of supportive uh, structures in place for, for enabling supports in the schools when it's running, for making sure there's workforce availability, um, the early childcare sector, as you know, is something that, that, that has been in there. I know we know there are um, there are staff on 38 week contracts in the childcare sector, and and it's something that has been 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 kind of pushed a little bit. Is the, is is well, I mean, you know, if they, if they, if if they they can do some work during the summer, then 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 that would very much suit suit suit, suit our agenda. So so that's happening in the background. Um, and 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 you obviously as parents is 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 a really important part of it. The, the, the one stakeholder I don't have written on here and the most important of all but I, but I think what I think what we all know that each of those groups has at heart is the child so so they're the most important stakeholder of all um, you know we're doing quite a quick review here because w we're anxious to announce something before before the end of January um, to give schools the ability to plan and to organize and to make this happen but I, I know for something like the review of Epson say for instance that we're doing 
it, it's really key to us to hear from the actual the actual children themselves you know ranging in disabilities and ages and everything else and we'll, we'll, we'll be doing a lot of that in the in in the early part of next year so i suppose this leads on to what you're talking about today and while we were thinking about today there was a number of kind of questions and you know, we, we're thinking a lot about, from talking to, to, to different groups, of what we can do and, and, and what will make things better. So we, we've come up with a, we could have come up with 27 questions probably, but we've come up with kind of four areas which will be put to you later. And I, I, I hope I'm not doing a spoiler here on you, but I, 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 I just wanted to give the context as to why we've, we've, we've kind of put these out there um, as possible things to look at. And they're, they're, not, they're in no way meant to be leading if, in case anyone thinks they are. But, but I suppose the first one is around the fact that it is an education programme that we run as the Department of Education. And we really want to see like what, what kind of education supports would be the most beneficial child, to your child as part of the programme in 2023. And, and essentially, what do you want your child to learn? And one, one of the things, one of the things that, that, that we learn from, from the way to do it in Malta is, is they have a theme every year, I think, it, it, you know, for what the programme should be. And I think that, that's something that we're very much going to do, whether, whether we... Whether it comes back into feedback or not, I think it's I think it's excellent in terms of, you know, ma ma kind of making it as 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 a as as a kind of an, an, a national event, with having a, a national team, etc. It, it makes it so much easier to promote it, to make people aware of it, all that kind of thing. Um, the second thing then is is just about the home based program, and you know, I, it works really well for many many people. It's been growing every year for the last few years. Um, but but and and for those people who do not have access to a school based program and and I suspect there 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 are parents who would prefer their children to be in in, in the learning in the home environment rather than going into a school and you know there there is a little bit of that so i suppose i suppose what do parents think of allowing this part of the program to be done on a group basis and or not necessarily in the home and you know some of the feedback we've 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 received from from parents as, as you know the staff that we have talking talk to parents and and teachers on a, on a daily basis and we always want to hear from them as well in terms of you know th those phone conversations are really vital in terms of informing what we do but 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 I, i'm you know I'm, I'm well aware that this is happening already uh and, and, and maybe it's something that we can formalize a bit better and make it make make it into a better package is looking at small group scenarios um and and you know where, where the home may not be su a suitable venue for additional tuition maybe looking at seeing uh, it, there might be areas where we're having it in a group environment, whether it's in a school or a community centre, wherever it happens to be, that that might that might work for some. So it's just kind of teasing that out a little bit as to your thoughts on it. Um, the third thing there is 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 you know I listed earlier that we have about five or six types of programmes and they've all come from different areas and they've all evolved slightly differently and maybe have slightly different rules and regulations. But would parents be in favour of having just one streamlined ski scheme that can be applied in all mainstream settings? And I've 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 purposely said mainstream because I, I think special 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 schools are something we probably do have to approach a little bit differently. But it, but it, but in mainstream, I think I, I, I'm kind of I'm thinking at least why do we have an inclusion program and a special class program and a and a desk program? Why not why not just have one program? I th I, I I I think it's worth teasing out. I I know um, we we want to prioritise those with the most complex needs, th those who need it the most, and it's how can we do that to a kind of a really structured structured way. So so and to have that consistency and consistency and in, in, in an integrated approach. And lastly, um, because it's something we have to be pragmatic about, how would you feel about your child attending another school in your locality or region for the summer programme, and what issues might have an impact on this decision? So this feeds into the a lot of the the talk already about appropriate training for staff having the specialist staff in place uh having staff have you know having children more importantly going into an environment maybe that they're not familiar with and, and and how that can be supported or 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 how that might work we have we have an opportunity because the summer program is going to be it has been announced it was announced this week that we're, we're doing it for everybody but but by the end of january we're going to have all the details in place following this review and it's a real opportunity to have that lead-in period where maybe things like this could be achieved that couldn't have been achieved pre previously. So it's really to tease that out. I, I know we have, we have transport issues as well, potentially, and I know tra transport might have been a bit of an issue for the department over the recent couple of months. So, so I, th I think, it, but I think, I think it is something. <laughs> I can, I can, we can laugh now. I can't laugh now. No, 
Um, but but it, but no, seriously, it is it is, so, it is something that, that 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 may have may have an impact, and and you know just 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 to see what the thinking is around those. So there's kind of four things that we it'd be great to get feedback from, and I know Anya has a survey as well that. You know, th th I, I doubt there'd be anything that we, we d we're overly surprised at, but, but I think it's really important that we get that feedback, especially when you talk about hundreds and hundreds of parents that have, have fed into it. So, look, at, I, I, I just wanted to kind of, uh, I'm delighted to be here and just to, to say a few words on it. I'm really interested to hear what all the other speakers have to say as well. So, look, thanks a million for your time and enjoy the rest of the day.